Now, it may be November, but the festive season and the cheering sound bites are already in full swing. This uh, Christmas will be considerably better uh, than last Christmas. Uh, if, 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 uh, if, you, if, if that will do for the time being on, on that one. The Prime Minister offering some reassuring words ahead of Christmas, or Chris Mask, as the newspapers today rebranded it, with face coverings becoming compulsory in shops and on public transport in England. Today, though, the Health Secretary said we were, quote, nowhere near bringing in tougher restrictions. The reason we've set out uh, these measures uh, yesterday, the couple of days before that, is to protect the progress uh, that we've made so that we can all continue to look forward to Christmas with our family and friends. I certainly am. Um but you could be forgiven if you weren't feeling very festive at all. With all this talk of a new variant, fresh restrictions being brought in, people asking that very depressing question once again, will Christmas be cancelled? There is, well, a sense of deja vu. And in Brentwood, Essex, where a case of the new variant was discovered, some are feeling, frankly, fed up. This one's meant to be more deadlier than the last, and now we've got to have another jab and another jab. Where does it end? I just don't... I don't see where it's going to end. To Are be you a bit over it? A little bit, yeah. Just a tad. Can <laughs> you tell? Just a tad. Just, just a, a tad, tiny yeah. bit. Of yeah, all the places it's been found here. Does that worry you? You worried about um, it? It's a bit worrying. Honestly, it is a bit worrying because I've got two kids and then you do think the uh, kids are still going to school and they are meeting up everyone. I feel it can be tackled. Um, the shops are very, very persistent in terms of um, putting on your masks. I think I feel safe when I see more people wearing masks. I think it's very, very difficult thing to enforce and to police it. This evening in Brentwood, those who had visited a fast food restaurant and members of a church were told to take PCR tests by the council, as a third case of the Omicron variant was discovered in the UK. Tonight, the Department for Education said secondary schools in England have been told pupils should wear face masks in communal areas. It's the variant with the most mutations and with the most evidence that uh, it could evade the immune system responses. Um, so, yes, it is the most worrying, but clearly as information evolves and we get new information coming in about severity of illness in particular, that will change our opinion as well. Today, 13 people arriving in Amsterdam on flights from South Africa were also confirmed to have the strain, as Israel and Morocco unveil plans to ban all foreign travellers from entering. Spain announced from Wednesday they'd stop all unvaccinated Brits coming into the country because of concerns about the new variant. Well, after testing positive for COVID, the Czech president had to appoint a new prime minister from inside a self-isolation box. Well, earlier I spoke to Professor Anthony Harden, who's Deputy Chair of the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation. I began by asking him how ambitious the booster programme needed to be to combat the Omicron variant. There are lots of constraints to any vaccination programme, including the booster programme, in terms of delivery. And what we really want to do is target those that are most vulnerable. And those that are most vulnerable, in fact, are those that are unvaccinated. So the offer remains to vaccinate those that are unvaccinated, the so-called evergreen offer. Uh, but of course, we'll also want to deliver boosters to those vulnerable groups and move down the ages as quickly as we can do. So wouldn't it be sort of a little bit useless, you know, vaccinating from, you know, the over 18s up? You've You've got to start first, as you say, with the you know, under 40s and then just work your way down. But will you get to the very youngest age group, do you think? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I hope at some point that we'll be able to offer all adults in the country a booster. But we do need, as you say, Cathy, to work down through the most vulnerable groups first. Uh, because with this new, this new variant that's potentially uh, transmissible, though we don't know yet, and potentially can avoid um, uh, some of the, the, the vaccine immunity, although we hope that not all vaccine immunity will be um, dodged by the, by, the, by the variant, we do want to move down through the most vulnerable groups first. Do you worry that if people get the message that the vaccine has been blunted by this new variant, that they might think, well, what's the point of getting vaccinated? It might blunt take-up. No, there's some really good evidence, actually, from experiments in the States uh, to suggest that um, even if the um, uh, variant partially escapes the vaccine, if you can have high levels of neutralising antibodies, that's through um, 
double vaccination plus booster or through natural infection, double vaccination and booster, um, then you, you will uh, be able to fight that um, variant off. And of course, what we don't know yet and, and still to be determined is the severity of illness caused by that variant. But Omicron might not be the doomsday scenario that some people um, might think. No, it's a worrying development, but, 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 but we're a long way from panicking or creating a doomsday scenario. What we want to do is press on, get those unvaccinated vaccinated, get those boosted that are eligible, and, and really move quickly through the uh, booster campaign. You've mentioned people who are unvaccinated a couple of times. Um, when you've got NHS workers frustrated that there are so many unvaccinated people in intensive care. Does it not make sense to consider, as Austria has done, making vaccinations compulsory? Well, the question with compulsory vaccination is, does that deliver more vaccinations to the unvaccinated? And, and that has never been proven in this country. So we've always taken the policy of, of persuasion rather than um, uh, legislation and coercion. Are you more concerned, perhaps, about the impact of the new variant in the developing world where vaccination rates are so much lower? Yes, I mean, the, 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 well, I'm very concerned about the developing world. Um, if you look at Southern Africa, there, there are a couple of problems. One is that they've got very low vaccination rates due to um, lack of access, but they've also got a lot of hesitancy. And um, we need to get the rest of the world vaccinated as soon as possible. Professor Anthony Harden, thanks very much.